Hi, Inigo. It's good to see you. It's good to talk to you again. Um, if you could just, before we go into the questions, just give a short idea of who you are and uh, what your organization is doing. Yeah, I'm uh, Inigo Mijangos. I'm uh, chairman of uh, SMA, Salvamento Maritimo Humanitario. And we are a Spanish uh, NGO that we are doing uh, search and rescue in the Central Med. What have you been doing there, rescuing people before Corona? And how have things changed or have things changed since the Corona outbreak in Europe? We appreciate a big difference uh, on the operations that we did with Saitamari before Corona, that uh, we didn't face any kind of uh, quarantine or any kind of, uh, let's say, special control, just the normal ones with the health authorities. And uh, after Corona, what we see is that we must face uh, these quarantines and also the people that we rescue, they must stay in, uh, in the ferry uh, for a long time. As far as I, I see is that they are using the Corona issue like an excuse to stop the activities of rescue. The people who is fleeing from violence, they are bringing somehow the illness to Europe. This is the, the narrative that uh, we appreciate uh, on the authorities. So right now, for example, here in Spain, in the south of Spain, there are some people that were working uh, in, in very bad conditions on, on those uh, uh, greenhouses on the south of Spain, and they found them, uh, some of them with positive cases, and they told them that they must stay doing the quarantine in those places that they are totally out of uh, any kind of uh, minimum standard conditions of, uh, of living. So the people working in the greenhouses, would they be migrants or would they be people who reached Spain by boat, refugees? Yeah, they, no, normally all of these people that was uh, that is working on the greenhouses, it's people that uh, they have uh, no papers in Spain. So yeah, before staying there, of course, they, they raise the, the coast in, in, in those boats. You were rescuing people who were forced to flee. They were forced to flee from hunger. They were forced to flee from war. They were forced to flee because they're from climate change or the results of climate change and you would rescue them with your crew and then where would you bring them? In the last case they told us to bring the people to Palermo but in that case when we bring the people to Palermo they transfer them to a big uh, ferry so they give that, that excuse of the Covid they put extra cost on the ships because we stay on the port and in the case for example of Palermo uh, they have a minimum fee of 500 euros per day uh, because we stay on the port in the time that they declare the port uh, closed for the COVID. So it, everything looks like it's an excuse to make our life much more difficult and trying to ban the, the, the ships from, from the rescue area. You are trying to rescue people, you can't bring them anywhere because no port wants them. If you manage to bring them to a port, you are locked into the port. You can't go out to rescue again. So what is Germany's role in all of this and what would you wish for from Germany? Well, I wish not only for Germany, I mean for all the European citizens and uh, European, uh, let's say, leaders or politicians, just to try to find a way of um, dealing with all this issue with the countries on the borders, I mean with Spain, Italy, Greece, uh, Malta, uh, Cyprus, that all of them they are facing this problem, so they need somehow uh, the solidarity of all Europe just handling the situation. Of course, the, for, for, from my point of view, the final solution is give uh, legal pathways and security pathways for the people, and options to come into Europe with uh, papers and all the, uh, let's say, rights as uh, citizens of the world. But in the meantime, it's necessary to, to find a solution in terms of solidarity. Because the best thing is that it's not necessary anymore, the civil fleet on the sea, because it is not anymore people with the needs to go into the sea in such conditions. You just mentioned the term solidarity and you said that's what you hope for, what you want, what you expect from all the people, all the citizens of Europe. Um, your experience in Spain as a Spanish NGO, has the solidarity 
with refugees, the solidarity with your volunteers who go out to rescue refugees. Has this solidarity changed in any way? Well, unfortunately, I think it's less. It's a kind of, uh, again, a, a small step back on the society because of the uh, afraid of, in this case, of, of, of the COVID at home, and then we will see later on what is going on. But this is something, this is a message that we cannot uh, accept because the people who is uh, on war, they cannot say, okay, let's stop the war for the next uh, three months until the COVID issue finishes in Europe because solidarity is not give what you have for, let's say, a lot. Solidarity is when you give what you don't have. Thank you very much.